Hi, this is John with ProAmp Solutions. Uh, welcome to uh, the middle of my project today. This is a Crown CDI 1000 uh, Pro Audio amplifier. And these are really good amplifiers. I, I really like them, their functionality, capability. And I've already got this board out of the chassis. But to talk about that, it's actually not very difficult to do uh, at all. You have uh, three screws on the front, and you have three screws on the back. And then uh, to uh, take these four screws out below this, I take a razor blade and I cut each section, and then I just you know fold this up, and you can remove the four insulated screws uh, on the heat sinks. And then you just got a couple screws uh, here. And then there's two screws that hold in a uh, shield here, one here and one here. And then you've got the screw that holds in the daughter board that this connects to. But, and then the, the screw, th there's just three screws that hold the top on. And it just, it's really not that difficult uh, to get this board out. Fairly easy to maintain. Um, the main issue with this one, uh, if you experience it where it will not power on, uh, C196 here is the culprit and uh, sometimes when you replace C196 the amp will power up and it'll uh, work fine. I would probably question how much longer it would work fine because this is a leading indicator of the state of some of the other uh, capacitors on this board but this one seems to really take it hard. The other two that are pretty key and important if you replace this and it works but it kind of comes up and goes into like this repeating boot cycle these two guys here are typically the culprit these are the filter caps for the plus and minus 15 volt supply rails for uh, the op amps here in the pre gain in the, in the preamp section um, there in this uh, case uh, I uh, a lot of times these uh, bigger can caps are, are good um, in my case, I'm replacing them all. Uh, these two here are difficult to source. They're 125 volt, 3800 uh, UF stock. Um, I'm going to replace them with 100 volt. Uh, I believe I got uh, 4700 UF 100 volts to put here. I'll include the part numbers actually for all of these on the, on the little uh, caps. Uh, there are six uh, 220 UF electrolytics. Uh, there are six uh, bipolar electrolytics. And then there are these two, this pair, one on the front and one on the back. So there's no, actually only three different part numbers for all the small ones. Um, and then you have uh, these two as a pair, these two as a pair, and these two as a pair. Uh, so this one's gonna. I'm in the. You can see I'm in the middle of it. I'm, I have already recapped all the the little guys, and I've got these two done. Uh, waiting on these to arrive, and waiting on my jacks to arrive on here, on the back. What I really wanted to talk about um, recapping this is fairly common, and and will give you many years of operating enjoyment once it's uh, recapped. Um, this board. Um, just a couple of conversational points about recapping this amp. I've had the most success. Uh, obviously, you know, I have a lot of experience, so um, this may be a little bit more difficult, but I would encourage you if you want to try this yourself and you, you understand the proper safety procedures. A note of caution, uh, when this amp is energized, uh, this heat sink on the front and back uh, have voltage on them. I believe this is about minus 30 and this is plus 30 on this side here. So you have to be you have to be cognizant of, of that. Um, but what I was getting to, uh, what I tend to do, um, even though I've got you know uh, electronic solder suckers and all kinds of other equipment, for this one, I actually found it the most expedient on the back side of the board. I'll just add a little fresh solder around the leads of these and then I'll gently work them out one side at a time and then after it's out 
uh, I've had the greatest success clearing the holes with solder wick. Uh, the main reason that these are so difficult to uh, like try to get out by with a solder sucker or is these leads are you know the hole size uh, just about matches the lead size and these the holes uh, are lined uh, and so it's just it's just difficult so in my experience the easiest way is just to gently work them out one side at a time and then once they're out work on clearing the holes with solder wick and I've been able to do that successfully uh, throughout uh, this board uh, same thing with the big ones uh, I would put you know a, just a little bit of fresh solder and, and get the melt the leads real hot um, these are you have to do you have to clear the uh, adhesive uh, that they use on each side of these um, and uh, you can see I've already uh, on, on uh, you know the adhesive that was on those so just be you have to I just kind of work a screwdriver in and it just kind of peels out uh, and then I, I work these out these snap-ons out a side at a time so to trick this amp out um, this particular amp is going to get used in a more portable situation rather than being hardwired in like a, a home setting maybe pro audio or, or home theater so in this particular case, uh, this amp is going to be used to drive like um, uh, uh, speakers with uh, speak on style connectors. And uh, for the portability, maybe from a mixing board coming in, this side here is actually quite easy uh, to add XLR jacks. If you notice on the chassis, there are already cutouts on the back on these four locations and these two locations. On this side, um, uh, I'm not sure every board is, but on my rev, all of these components here that are required for this are populated already. So all you have to do is uh, clear these four holes out uh, for each jack. So these two would be jacks, these two uh, would be XLR plugs. And if you install all four, you can actually use them as a pass-through. Um, this side, slightly more involved, but not too difficult. Basically, you have to relocate these four capacitors to this location. And you have to relocate these four surface mount resistors to this location. You can see I've already uh, done that on this amp. So I removed these capacitors. I tested them after they were out of circuit to make sure I didn't damage them with any heat. Uh, they all tested perfectly. So I reinstalled those. And then just be cognizant on the surface mount resistors. The outside uh, pair are one ohm and the inside pair are 300 ohms. So when you move them, just be cognizant that you get them in the right spots. One ohm on the outside, 300 ohm on the inside. And then when you're done, make sure you measure your continuity and um, make sure you measure uh, for that, you know, the, none of those are damaged. So uh, once those are relocated, uh, these four holes here on each side are what's involved for the uh, speak on style connector. But once you clean this real estate and you clear those four holes out on each side, then you can put the speak on style connectors direct mount them here and with an exacto knife if you just open up the vinyl on each of those locations in the back um, you'll expose the jacks um, and then basically all you have to do to retain uh, the terminal strip connection is now from these locations i'll bring uh, wires up with spade connectors uh, to the four what that were connected uh, here so basically you remove the four wires you move the four capacitors you relocate the four resistors um, and then this is freed up so this amp is going to get completely uh, recapped um, and then we're going to install uh, those jacks so I'll come back and follow up once I've installed uh, the jacks and got it recapped and we'll uh, see this thing completed and I'll show you uh, what the back looks like and how the interfaces work 
uh, once this work is completed. So we'll rejoin and uh, see the finished product. Also, I wanted to show you a neat way to test these resistors here and make sure there's no trace damage is to put the probes of your own meter across the pads of where they were removed. So you should get one ohm there, 300 ohms there, 300 ohms there, and one ohm there. So that's beautiful and then if you tested the continuity you can also verify that these caps are all in parallel with these location this location here so basically just relocating the resistors and the capacitors frees this up to use the punch outs that are already there and install speak on jacks One thing I uh, forgot to mention in the last video that I think is important, if you notice this area of the board here, uh, you can see the discoloration from the heat of these six resistors, which I have removed. Uh, these are 48.7K 1 watt resistors stock. And what I've elected to do to prevent any uh, further damage of the board here, I've got 3 watt uh, 48.7k resistors on the way and uh, I'm going to raise them up from the board just a little the stock ones are kind of right on the board and as you can see they dissipate a lot of heat so uh, with three waters they'll run cooler and I'm going to elevate them from the board just a little bit uh, in that area there to prevent further heat damage because uh, I'd really like this amp to last a, a long time really enjoy it Okay, I wanted to show you the finished installation of the XLR jacks and the speak on jacks, what it looks like from the back side of the enclosure. So I took an X-Acto knife and I was able to trim these out real nicely uh, and open up the holes. And so uh, this is what the rear looks like. And then I left the uh, uh, secondary board off here so I can sh turn it down and show you what the inside looks but this is the what the finished rear looks like and I'll put part numbers for each of these in uh, the description on the video and then let's let me uh, make sure we're focused down here okay and this is what the bottom or top side of the circuit board looks with these installed so these two are the plugs uh, these two are the jacks and then these are the speak ons again over here we relocated these capacitors and resistors and then I made, made new wire uh, connections uh, for the spades up here in this location so uh, getting ready for the power on test this amp has been completely recapped 100% uh, all the electrolytics replaced uh, we've added the XLR jacks added the speak ons and we had to do a little relocation on the back side here to accomplish that. So nothing is required here on this side other than opening up holes. And this side requires moving four caps and four resistors and making new leads for the spade connections. But then you have the dual functionality of the screw-on terminals, uh, the Phoenix connector here, XLR, and speak-on.